meeting warrant, um, mainly because in the event that something happens and then we are, there's extra money left on the table that uh, we have as revenues that have not been has not been appropriated, um, that there is an avenue to put them into the stabilization fund or the capital fund, as the case may be. Um, as of right now, I am not anticipating that we will have any monies available for appropriation to either the stabilization fund or the capital fund. As I mentioned or alluded, alluded to earlier, this was a difficult year uh, in putting together the operating budget of the town. So my strong belief is that unless some massive changes occurs within the operating budget on town meeting floor, the likelihood of there being monies available for appropriation to the capital fund or the stabilization fund at the end of the meeting is probably remote. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the articles that are going to be presented at town meeting on May 18th. Uh, again, I ask for your indulgence in coming to this important meeting. It is something that we ask all of the uh, citizens of West Boylston to come out to uh, on an annual basis and help uh, set the course of the uh, set the course of the direction of the town of West Boylston moving forward. In just a moment, I'm going to begin a discussion on the operating budget. So stay tuned. So now let me start talking about the operating budget. And you may have heard these types of speeches in the past from me uh, from previous years when I did the operating budget uh, presentation. I'm going to talk a little bit about where we get our money so that the people of the town know. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about where we spend our money. Um, but it always starts, at least with me anyways, it always starts with where do we get our money from. And in West Boylston, like most communities, um, we have seen somewhat limited revenue increases over the last few years. We have been in an economic downturn. There have been indications that things are improving. However, in my uh, belief, it hasn't been improving at the rates that we were hoping for, that we were expecting when we started crafting our operating budgets. So as I said to you from the get-go, this has been a very difficult year to put together our operating budgets. We've had some very uh, significant costs that we've had to cover, but at the same time, the revenues weren't always there to support those added costs. So this has been a particularly challenging year in putting together the operating budget. The town's revenues for appropriation is divided into four main categories, property taxes, state aid, available funds, and miscellaneous receipts. And I want to talk a little bit about those in general. Property taxes are the largest uh, single revenue source for the town. It historically provides roughly two-thirds of all of the total operating revenues that the town has. Property taxes are levied on real property, which is land and bu businesses, and personal property, which is like equipment. Uh, which are used by the West Boylston non-manufacturing business firms. In accordance with state law, the town's board of assessors determines what the fair market value for all the taxable real property is. And as you know, we operate under the provisions of Mass General Law Proposition 2.5, which in the aggregate means that we may not exceed 2.5% of the full and fair cash value uh, when establishing what the property taxes are. This is known as what the levy ceiling is. Annual levy increases can only exceed 2.5% uh, more than the previous fiscal year's levy, uh, plus the taxes added from any new properties which are added to the tax rolls, which is what we call kind of new growth. And then on top of that is any Proposition 2.5 overrides or any debt exclusions that were added to supplement or add revenues or resources to that uh, annual levy limit. Uh, as the town's primary revenue source, the property tax limit levy limit is expected to increase in, uh, in fiscal 16 by approximately $543,000 which means that our property tax is uh, revenue will be about $15.6 million. This increase includes the allowable 2.5% increase, level funding of uh, the annual Prop 2.5 debt exclusions, plus the new growth of about $100,000 that we've calculated uh, for new growth properties that come onto the books. 
Um, this, um, this is also net, uh, the annual reserve for abatements or exemptions, which we put into an overlay account, which is estimated to be $130,000 of the, which is the current estimate. The next category of revenues is miscellaneous local receipts. In this category, revenues includes fees or permits or fines, license-related monies that come into the town every single year. It's also interest on investments or paid uh, by late taxpayers. If we have any fines or interest paid, uh, late, late taxes that are paid by taxpayers, those monies also count towards this category. However, the largest single source of funds within this category is motor vehicle excise, which is a state tax which is collected by the municipality for its own use. And it's much lower in recent years uh, due to the uh, declining economy. However, the last couple of years in particular has increased slightly. The level of miscellaneous receipts is greatly affected by outside economic conditions. Uh, hence, the current recessionary period resulted in fewer building permits uh, and also fewer licensed establishments uh, and also fewer businesses being started from scratch. The general economic uh, slowdown also affects the amount of money earned on interest by banks uh, and on the level of delinquent taxes being paid with interest. In next fiscal year, we're using the estimate of $2.35 million for our local estimated receipts. And sometimes people ask, well, how come we can't raise that number even higher? And the Mass Department of Revenue frowns on that and actually has Mass General laws that dictate that you can't raise that higher than what you previously budgeted for unless you have documentation that shows that you can support that additional level. The next category of revenues is available funds. It is the um, source of funds uh, in special revenue funds, certified free cash from previous fiscal years, unexpended bond proceeds, and any funds remaining from completed projects. Let me be clear that these sources of funds may not always be consistent uh, and should not be counted on for developing our annual revenue numbers. We look at it critically every single year. A prudent approach to these funds would be to use these funds to appropriate for warrant articles or to add to our stabilization fund and or capital fund if you can. This year the town has about 220000 in certified free cash at the close of fiscal 14 that is available for expenditure. And we do have a reserve policy that dictates that we will use those funds for the support of next fiscal year's operating budget. These funds were derived from aggressive tax collections, revenues in excess of initial projections, and any budgetary surpluses that we may have had. Other sources of funds available in fiscal 16 are projected to include our stabilization fund, although at this point I am not expecting to use stabilization fund to balance the operating budget, our capital fund, and again, I don't anticipate using the capital fund to uh, balance the operating budget, but rather to use to fund items in our capital wish list. Uh, transfers from ambulance receipts, that has been a big money maker for the town of West Boylston is ambulance receipts, and we are expecting to use a significant portion of funds there. Uh, transfer from the Wachusa EMS fund, uh, any overlay surpluses, and any other sources that might be available. Uh, I anticipate being able to use about 400000 or so from ambulance receipts and about 17000 from the Wachusett Fund, which is a fund that the town benefits from after the closing of the Holden Hospital. In addition to the reserve policy, I expect to use the 220000 in free cash, which totals roughly $637,000 uh, in, this, uh, in, in, in this category of available funds. Under state aid, which is the last category of revenues that I'm going to talk about, it is our second largest source of revenues. Right now, I am expecting to use about $4.4 million as our estimate for local aid, which includes $617,000 in school building assistance monies to help offset the payments of our high school renovation project. And this is based on the recent declaration of our newly elected governor, Governor Baker. 
We also need to back out of that number, though, uh, the amount of charges and assessments from the Commonwealth. Uh, the fiscal 16 estimated state charges are almost $600,000. Therefore, we are estimating to the use for revenues under state aid about $3.8 million. I'd re I would be remiss if I did not also point out that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts also makes an annual payment to the town of West Boylston for hosting the Wachusett Reservoir and the state-owned lands uh, affected by the Wachusett Reservoir. Under the law, the payment can never be decreased as other pilot or payment in lieu of taxes can be. Uh, this year the town is expected to receive over $600,000 in such payments and this is included in our local receipts line. Therefore the amount of revenues for fiscal 16 are our local aid numbers, our available funds, our local receipts, and our local taxation comes to be about $22,420,000 in change. So that's where we're starting from as far as our revenues for our operating budget begins. So let's talk about where we're hoping to spend our money. The town's operating expenditures are divided into functional categories that become the legal budget uh, appropriated at town meeting. These functional categories include general government, uh, public safety, education, uh, public works, human services, culture and recreation, debt service, intergovernmental, uh, employee benefits, and general insurance. And added to this is also, as I mentioned earlier, the sewer enterprise budget. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that at length here tonight, but I, I do want to talk about the general operating budget of the town. So um, let's start with general government. I'm going to go through each line item with a very basic explanation of what that line item covers so that the people of the town of West Boylston will have a good knowledge going into town meeting as to all the things that we budget for at our annual town meeting. The first line item, line item is under the moderator. I'm proposing level funding this line item and it covers the expenses to attend the annual Mass Moderators Association training conference and meeting and it also covers the elected salary of $1. Under the Board of Selectmen, I'm proposing level funding this line item at $6,155. This line item will color, cover the elected salaries of the selectmen at $1 any legal postings and mailings throughout the year, as well as our MMA expenses. It also covers the, the cost of selectmen attending the MMA conference in January. Under the town administrator's line, I'm proposing funding this line item at $193,500. This includes the salaries and cost of living adjustments for the municipal assistant and the funding for the town administrator's position, including all ancillary costs associated with that. Under the reserve fund, this fund is necessary to cover any unforeseen expenses re incurred by the town and the finance committee must approve any expense paid for by this fund. This safety net to cover unanticipated costs in the upcoming uh, year will be hampered by any reduction in this line item. Therefore, I am proposing level funding this line item at $43,200, and the town's department managers have to be commended for their efforts to live within their reduced budgets that they've been operating under for the last several years. Under the finance department, I'm proposing increasing this line item from $177,225 to $180,730. This maintains the one employee of the department with a cost of living adjustment, and I am proposing funding this line item as a bottom line amount for the first time ever, as opposed to breaking it down between wages and other. And that's primarily due to the fact that the current contract we have with our contracted um, finance director is about to expire in the next few months. Uh, the town has not yet finalized how they're going to deal with this, whether they're going to hire a town accountant or a finance director, or if they're going to try to get a firm to run the uh, department as has been done over the last several years. Voting the budget this year will give the town great flexibility depending on which course of action they wish to take. 
under the town audit and proposing increasing this line item from 25000 to 35000 This covers our auditing services for next year. It is increased this year due to the fact that the town will need a special audit this year to cover the actuarial services needed to comply with the GASB 45 requirements. Under the assessors, I'm increasing this line item from 83,930 to 96,376. This budget reflects the current level of services in the assessor's department. The, the assessor's salaries also remain at $1, and it includes our services contract with our principal assessor. Uh, it will also add for the first time ever the cost of periodic inspections into the operating budget. In previous years, we had a separate warrant article for periodic inspections. This year, we decided to eliminate that warrant article and build it into the operating budget of the assessors. So that's why the increase this year in the assessors line seems higher than what would ordinarily be the case. Uh, treasurer tax collector line, I'm proposing increasing the line from 182938 to 183131 This increase provides for a cost of living adjustment for the employees of the department and maintains the current level of services from the treasurer collector's department. It also includes some funds for tax title enforcement, banking fees, and for training. Under the town council line, I'm proposing level funding this line item at $80,000. We continue to be more conservative with the town council budget. I will need to work with all departments and the board of selectmen on keeping within this budget if possible. Under computer services, I'm proposing increasing this line item from $78,660 to $100,395. It includes the purchase of a very limited number of needed equipment, and the amount includes the cost of computer maintenance agreements, including new contracts for our new SoftWrite financial software program. Under Town Clerk, I'm proposing increasing this line item from 72518 to 79468 This budget maintains the services provided for in the Town Clerk's budget, uh, with a cost of living adjustment for the town clerk and the assistant town clerk. But it also, for the first time, includes all the funds found within the elections budget, which were used to supplement the uh, salary of the assistant town clerk. Because the assistant town clerk had previously done, and still does, uh, elections work, uh, I found it necessary not to split that woman's salary between two different departments, but rather put it all under the town clerk's line. Uh, so that the costs are as transparent as possible. Under the elections, on the other hand, we are going to decrease this line item from 28470 to 24470 It covers the cost of the Automark election system and the coding and the postage uh, needed in order to support the uh, town elections, but it also um, it covers the cost of the upcoming normal schedule elections but it's reduced by the amount added to the town clerk's budget in the previous discussion, uh, which was used to supplement the, uh, the salaries of the assistant town clerk. Under planning board, I'm proposing that they receive an allocation of $3,232 to help cover the secretary and any posting costs. They will continue to maintain their revolving fund. It was raised by the amount of the cost of living adjustment. Under Public Safety Building, I'm proposing level funding this line at $47,120. It does set aside, once again, $9,900 for the municipal building's maintenance improvements for the buildings. Under Town Hall, I'm proposing decreasing this line item from $91,385 to $77,385. This covers the hours of the janitor and the con consolidated supply service line, and it covers the operational cost of our new Town Hall, but we also appropriate $9,900 for building maintenance similar to that of other municipal buildings. And finally, under General Government, I have Town Report and proposing maintaining this line item at $1,000. This, this is due to the work of our municipal assistant in reducing these printing costs of the annual report over the last several years. The total number under general government is $1,151,213, 
which is an increase of 3.7%, primarily due to the increases in the computer line and the assessor's line. Next category of government is the analysis of public safety. First is the police department. I'm proposing increasing this line item from 1,361,187 to 1,391,215. It includes a cost of living adjustment for the officers and one non-union employee. All other line items are level funded from last year. It does include the cost of a new cruiser via our, our cruiser replacement program. Under the fire department, I'm proposing increasing this line item from $658,000 to $669,000. This budget includes a cost of living for all employees and uncovers the ambulance billing and the hospital medical direction services that previously were covered under a separate warrant article. Under public safety communications, I'm proposing decreasing this line item from $89,000 for uh, I'm sorry, under public safety communications, I'm proposing increasing this line item from 263,681 to 268,781. This provides for level services within the department, and please know that we are continuing our efforts to regionalize this service uh, in West Boylston with the neighboring towns of Princeton and in Holden. Uh, we're working out the best deal for the town. Uh, we've made a lot of progress in this uh, item over the last year, and I expect that this will happen in the next uh, 18 months. Under the building department, I'm proposing decreasing this line item from 89421 to 82771 This bill budget reduction is pri partially accounted for by the discontinuation of the practice of sharing our building inspector with the neighboring town of Sterling. It does include a cost of living and a step increase for the administration, administrative assistant within the department. Under a sealer of weights and measures, I'm proposing level funding this line item at $1,775. All, as always, it is the town's hope that the emergency management budget will be supplemented with grants. It is at its current uh, level, oh, I'm sorry, uh, it level funds the sealer of weights and measures line. It, the town does recoup uh, the inspection fees uh, for these tests that we pay for the uh, pay for with this contract at $1,775. Under emergency management, I'm proposing maintaining the line item at $7,500. And as always, it is the town's hope that the emergency management budget will be supplemented with grants. At its current level, the budget does not allow for any advancement of the town's emergency management processes, but it does provide resources towards implementing an emergency alert system within the community. And finally, under public safety, um, is animal control. I'm proposing increasing this line item from $10,276 to $10,411.